Writing the mail, MSX games from Japan. Collecting without fail those shoot 'em ups, and that's the plan. He doesn't just collect them, he also codes them too. Join us and we'll go on electric adventures with you. Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here with my monthly update for August 2017. Um I was away for most of the month, uh, good o well over two weeks. I was lucky enough to be able to go to uh, Sydney for four days and then on a cruise around the Pacific for 12 days uh, with my wife, two younger children and, um, and uh, my, um, my in-laws, so my mother and father-in-law as well. So a bit of a family, uh, you know, world exploration, relax, travel and um, and look at a few places. So we went to New Caledonia um, and Fiji um, and a few of the islands around there as well and of course did some cruising and also looked around Sydney as well. I bought absolutely nothing gaming away uh, related while I was away um, but I did get actually quite a few other things showed up during the month um, and we'll go through those now. So these are mostly modern pickups and things so one of the earlier ones was Wipeout um, Amiga Collection um, obviously it's been out for a, uh, probably a month or so now I uh, really wanted this couldn't find a copy in my local store when I had the money um, uh, it had disappeared off the shelves or something so I actually ordered this off um, Amazon I got it off in the US and I got it for quite a decent price as well so um, I've played it a little bit and quite enjoyed it. Uh, I haven't got very far through yet, but it definitely is a very good version. Definitely enjoying that one. Um, and almost at exactly the same time, a pre-order that I um, put through Play, Play Asia ages ago uh, came, and it was Ghost Blade HD. Uh, and because of it came, you know, pretty much just before my holidays. I really haven't played it very much at all yet. I've only really had a quick game. Um, now the special edition comes with um, the game itself. So I can't really give my opinion on it yet because um, I haven't really played it very much at all. And it also comes with the soundtrack. See the soundtracks are even still in its plastic wrap. Um, so I will be giving that a good play. Uh, it comes with a few bonus cards as well. So there's. Uh, it's got a. It's got my certificate number there. So out of the limited edition. Um, I think this is Play Asia bonuses. It's a little sticker. And. Pop out character cards. Yeah, they'll pop out, I suppose, yeah. And pop out chips as well. So, a few extra things, plus there was the usual uh, Play Asia $5 coupon as well. Um, I can't actually remember when I pre ordered this, I think it was a while ago. Uh, there is another, um, another shooter up that I have on order from Play Asia that will come out later in the year. Is it Play Asia or is it. No, that actually might be Amazon. I'm being silly. Yeah, I think it's Raiden 5, or Raiden, or, 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 the new Raiden game anyway, because obviously I like my shooter ups So I'll finish packing that away later. Um, I got a note while I was ordering some other things, and some, a lot of these are actually from Amazon, uh, dot, dot com, so it's from the States. Um, I chucked another couple of things into Save uh, Freight. So pretty much I got these two games for free because they were basically equal to uh, the price of the freight and they were very cheap I think. So this Money Number 9 might have been about $9 once again in the plastic wrap because these things have all arrived at once and I haven't had a chance to play them. And I go and missed out on the back that we'll never saw this in Australia is Mega Man Legacy Collection and I quite like the Mega Man games. So I've definitely got some new games for the PlayStation 4 that um, I'll need to get into play. Now, one of the uh, I've got a couple of books at the same time. Um, 
this is another one of the, of, I've got the two previous books in the series by Brett Weiss and it's classic home video games um, what is it? 1989, 1990 and specifically about the Turbo Graphics and the Genesis and the Neo Geo so um, so they're basically complete game guides and system guides they're, they're not heavy on pictures they're more heavy on on information just to give oh sorry just missed there we go so there are some pictures in there but there's lots of information about each of the games for those various systems and they make a good reference guide so um, haven't really had much of a chance to read much of that as yet um, and continuing along the book line this, um, I got another one in the Hardcore Gaming 101 Digest and this one is Tato Arcade Classics um, this is quite a good one, it's got lots of you know, not just shoot 'em up games, it's got a lot of um, arcade you know, like platform and action games as well and it's in its usual colour detail, probably not quite as good as the other volumes um, but I have enjoyed them a lot. So what has it got in here? It's got uh, Rastan, Ninja Warriors, Dead Connection, New Zealand Story, Elevator Action, the Darius series, obviously that's the main shoot 'em up focus, Thunder Fox, is another shoot 'em up, Growl and Night Stalker, Stalker plus many more. Um, but it was quite a good read. I've read all the way through that and thoroughly enjoyed it. I do like that series. Now, uh, one Kickstarter thing arrived during the month, and it's a big, heavy tome, and it is Ness Oddities and the Homebrew Revolution. Um, so, Jeffrey Wittenhagen. Um, and so, I backed this on Kickstarter. So, it's very well put together. The quality is excellent. Sorry, so I show some of the things in here. I hurt the book though. There's a few extra bits in the back of things. I was just trying to find the um, lots of ads in the back. Classic Nintendo ads in the back. Uh, so super special thanks. Yeah, so here's all the all the backers in the back, and I'm listed in there as well. Uh, but more importantly, this actually has some of my games in it and there's more in here than I expected it's sort of like he went through my um, website so there's my cavern fighter just happened to open it on the right page there um, this is the in development stay uh, phase sort of section he's picked a few things out so where is oh, I've got another one here I was in here more than not I mean there's the pedal to the metal uh, that I worked on in the multi-cart for the uh, for the nest there yep and there is my pixie disc as well uh, but obviously in the release section we actually have if that was on the horizon sorry this is a bit boring watching me flick through my book and these were the, um, you know, the ones that I was expecting to be in here. So they are in alphabetical order. I should be able to find them easier than I'm doing. Now I can't even find my own game. Might be the wrong section. What section was I in? Digital. Oh, that was in the digital, not in the digital section. Silly me. Um, it has, you know, like the limited release titles and everything like that. So it also has, there it is. So here's the game on. Expo Championship cartridge, which I um, programmed all of the games on that. 
So 215 estimated copies exist. So I sold at the game on Expo in 2015. I actually uh, learned how to program the NES by writing that and wrote all three games in just over three months. It was an enjoyable experience and got me started um, writing on the NES, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Obviously written games for the MSX and Spectre, original Spectre Video and Coleco for quite a few years, so it was nice to have um, a bit of a break from that system. Alright, so now we're in, we're out of the uh, limited releases, and this is the last one, and then I'll just show you some other random things throughout the book, but there's a lot of detail on each of the titles. There we go. So there's my Media Swarm. Um, so the book's laid out quite nicely, so that all of this section is the homebrew section, um, but the actual main part of the book is the oddities. So these are lots of detail on different games. It's a very well put together book, very good quality. Um, so this isn't, you know, this is. Um, you know, the games that are a bit unusual or, um, that's the best way to describe it, it's not like um, Pat's complete guide to the um, um, you know, the, the US, America, US set. There's, these are the, the games that were on the, the Famicom and everything like that. Uh, unlicensed games, so there we go, there's all the unlicensed games in there as well. So it just goes through different sections and there's lots of information on each game and it really is good quality and uh, a lovely hardback so it complements um, Pat the NSF Punk's um, complete guide to the US American set as well so I haven't finished reading all the way through, it's a huge book um, so basically it's got unlicensed Nepal exclusives, Japanese Famicom and Famicom Disk System, international unlicensed games, Nintendo's versus arcade and play choice games, the holy grails and accessories, and 500 plus brand new homebrew games. So book well worth getting. You can still get copies of the book um, Jeffrey, directly from um, Jeffrey Whitnall. Well worth doing. All right, probably enough rambling there. Um, I haven't had much time to watch all the videos once again, so there probably are some questions circulating there. So, once again, I'm going to put forward one of my own. Um, could be a simple question for you, could be a hard question. What is the one item in your collection that you like the most? And tell me the story about it. So, the favourite, probably my most favourite um, slash nostalgic item in my collection would be my Spectre Video 738 Express, which is the main system I used to develop a lot of my later games on the MSX. Um, it has an inbuilt drive. Um, it's been changed from the original because the original only came with a single sided 3.5 inch floppy. I changed it for a double sided and updated the BIOS. Um, has lots of ports on the back. It looks it's modeled a lot on the Apple um, was it the Apple 2C that came out at one stage. Uh, it's very similar in form factor. Um, it is actually it has an MSX2 graphics chip in it, which allowed it to do an 80 com mode. But it's only got MSX1 ROMs in it. You can actually uh, modify these in um, two stages. You can make them an MSX2 just by adding extra video memory and a real-time clock circuitry and changing the ROMs. It's actually really, really simple. Um, and you can, with a lot of rewiring and jiggery poker, you can make them MSX2+, Plus, uh, but they don't end up with the MSX Music part of the circuitry, so that's probably not the, the best upgrade to do them. I actually have two of these because my friend um, I grew up with um, who gave me all my at original Atari 2600 collection, which was the stuff I used to play back in the day. had one of these as well, and when he left the state with the Atari 2600, he gave me his one, of his um, Spectre Video 738 as well, so I've got that as a spare. His keyboard doesn't work as well as, as mine still does, though. Um, other modifications, I, I put a reset switch in, 
so it wouldn't wear the on off switch. It has two joystick ports, tape port around there. It has um, lots of expansion options on the back. It has a RS232C built in, a uh, secondary floppy port, printer port, and your video inputs and outputs on the back there. And the actual stand oops, is stuck. It's been sitting on that stand for so long. Pulls out can be a bit of a handle and also pops down to cover the ports at the back which is a really clever nice design and when it's like that it puts it at a nice angle which made typing on it uh, very good it has one normal MSX uh, cartridge slot uh, doesn't actually have a second one at all which is um, quite unusual for an MSX machine to only have one expansion slot um, and basically, yes, it's my favourite item in my collection because it is. it has so much nostalgia um, on the fact that I developed uh, a lot of my letter toys, especially the machine code ones on this. Um, it ran CPM as well as MSX DOS, and I used to use the uh, CPM um, machine code assembler, um, uh, called, uh, and another one called Gen 80 from HiSoft as well, uh, as my assembler to writing running a similar on the machine um, and of course floppy disks you know made it a lot easier things and then of course I've got lots of pirated game disks as well so I never actually owned very many MSX cartridges um, back in the day which would surprise a lot of people um, after you've seen how many MSX games I have now so well, this is my favorite item in my entire collection what's yours and tell me your story about it Alright, that's probably enough rambling for this month. Um, I hope you, everybody out there is well, enjoying their collecting, enjoying their game playing, and um, uh, are well and healthy. I'm Electric Adventures, thanks to all my subscribers, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.